What's up, scampers? Welcome back to another video. This is my closet. It needs some shelves. I'm going to build some. So you might be able to tell that these two cabinets are just big vacant spaces. They don't have any shelving, which would be great if I had large things to store in there, but I don't. I use this like a pantry. I want some shelves. I'm going to try to build some shelves without putting any holes in the fiberglass anywhere in the scamp. As with everything scamp, there's scamper in the bottom and the back of these cabinets. I do have bare walls on either side, which is where I'm going to put my shelving supports. But much like a scamp, nothing is square. Everything's rounded, oddly shaped. I have a couple of screws I need to navigate around. So what I'm going to do is start by making some templates so I know exactly what shape and size I need to create my shelving supports. My first step was to create a template out of paper. So I simply taped a bunch of computer paper together put it up against each wall and made an individual template for each portion of the cabinets. Each side is different. Some have protruding bolts that come through. Some have scamp for glued on a different way. So I had to make an individual template for each side of these cabinet walls. I just placed the paper up against there, traced it out with a Sharpie, and I had a paper template that I could transfer to cardboard for something a little more rigid to see if it fit in snugly and almost stayed in place by itself without anything holding it up. Transferring my paper templates onto the cardboard templates gave me the chance to see if they would fit through the opening in this door since the interior is slightly bigger than this opening allows for. So I label each of them. So I have upper north side. Fits right in there and it's pretty snug. It's just staying up on its own power. I'm hoping that the wood will do the same. This is the upper south side. That one fits in well and it fits around the bolts. Lower north side. Lower south side. See, this right here is exactly why I wanted to put my templates onto something rigid. This opening for the door, even at an angle, isn't big enough for this template to fit through here without bending in the middle. So I definitely need to shrink this a little bit when I transfer it to the wood so I can make it through the opening. So I'm going to cut just a little extra off the top so it will still stand up against the wall in its own power, but it will be just a little bit smaller so it can fit through here without bending in the middle because my wood's not going to bend. I've got my templates. I've got a good idea how they're going to fit and they're going to make it through the doorway. So let's transfer these onto some wood. So now I've got my wood. These are going to be my shelf supports. I transferred those templates right onto the wood. I sanded everything down to give it more rounded corners and give it like a smoother surface so I don't get splinters putting my hands in and out of the cabinets all the time. But they look good. It's time to see if they fit. This might be a good time to mention that I don't have a ton of woodworking experience. Um, up until these, the only thing I've ever built from scratch was the workbench you saw me working on. So this doesn't take a lot of woodworking skills or a lot of tools. I'm using three power tools. I have limited experience, but it's just something if you go for it, you'll realize it's not as hard as you thought it was going to be. But also I broke my microphone while I was cutting these. So I apologize if the sound quality deteriorates at this point in the video. Let's see if they fit. Top one's going in first. Yeah. 
Wow. Nice. Oh, perfect fit. The top two are in. I was able to avoid those bolts back there. I've got a pretty snug fit all around. I think this is gonna work great. This one came out surprisingly snug fit. It's actually quite tight just based on the fit. The scamper is pretty much holding it in place just like it is. The one on this side has a little bit more play, but that's because I didn't want to get too tight around those bolts in case I ever need to do some repairs or remove these. The bottom two were definitely more oddly shaped, so let's see if I can get this configuration right on the first try. It fits through, that's a good start. Oh man, like a glove. That's amazing. This was the big one. Let's see if it'll go. Ooh. Okay, so I did cut it short enough to fit through. Uh. Okay, it fits in there, but it's a little bit wide. It's not fitting in right here. So I think I'm gonna need to sand this one down to get a little better fit, but hey, three out of four ain't bad. I apologize that you can't see in here better. These cabinets are actually quite small, so it's pretty hard to film inside of them. But if you're wondering how I'm gonna make these stay up like this without screwing them into the wall, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out where I want the shelves. I'm gonna put in a little support piece. And when I slide the shelf in and put it down flat on those support pieces, it'll actually press these two pieces against the wall and hold them in place. So these will be semi-permanent. If I decide I don't like where the shelves are placed, I can move the heights. If I decide I want this to be an open space for something bulky in the future, I can take these out. There's no damage done to the scamp and it's pretty rigid when it's put together, but it's easy to take apart. So let's figure out where I want these shelves to go. And what better way to measure than what I actually want to store in there? Since this is my pantry, I'm going to use these soup cans to figure out the height for my first shelf. That's what I want to store in there. It makes an easy measurement. I'm not level, so using a level would be a little bit tricky, but this is a nice way to improvise. Kind of gives me a rough estimate. Got my height. Let's see. Is 10 inches exactly that's easy oh boy is this hard to measure wow almost 12 exactly now i have a rough idea of where i want my shelf to be I need to go f cut myself a piece of plywood that is 10 inches wide, 12 inches deep. I've got my shelving piece cut. If I can get it through the door, you'll kind of see how this will hold the sidewalls in place when it's there. Let's just pretend these soup cans are the support brackets. There we go. Perfect fit. Once the shelf is in place, it's putting tension against these two pieces and keeping the support pieces in place. So I just need to add something right here that'll hold the shelf up and voila, I've got my first shelf. Okay, so to support my shelves, I just made some rough cuts off the end of this two by four here. Nothing needs to be super precise. This isn't rocket science. You just can do rough cuts. It doesn't have to be great. You just gotta get close, so don't be intimidated. I'm gonna glue and bolt these to the line I made for where I want my shelf to go. And then when I set my shelf on top of it, I'll have a nice flush support system that'll hold the shelf and the sidewalls in place.
These are what all my pieces look like. Let's do the install. Piece number one. Piece number two. And then my shelf I cut to size. And it's in. I've got a shelf. Just like that. Screws, a piece of plywood, a scrap 2x4, some wood glue. So I have repeated the process twice more, and now I've got two shelves up top, three shelves down below, where I used to only have two big hollow shelves. I've now got much more organization. There you have it. Now I have shelves in my scamp and I made them myself and it barely cost me anything at all. So if right about now you're thinking, oh, that's cool, but I don't have the skills to do that. I want to reiterate that this was my second woodworking project. I found used tools on Facebook Marketplace. I learned how to use them safely. I built a workbench for practice and now this was my second project. If you're thinking you can't do it, there's a word missing at the end of that sentence. You just can't do it yet. So if you think this is something you might want to try, find those tools used learn how to use them safely and go for it. This really wasn't that hard. It came out great and it's going to make a huge difference with my camping experience now. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you found value in it, go ahead and check out some other ones while you're here and consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.